I'm Nick Harcourt and we're backstage at the Greek Theatre in beautiful Los Angeles and Noel Gallagher's with us. Hello. It's good to see you. Thank you very much. Um, I just saw the sound check, which was amazing. <laughs> um, it really was. I mean, you guys, like, you don't mess around. It's like a solid... What do you play, like six songs every night before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't, I don't like, I, I, I don't mind sound checking, but um, yeah, the, down the years, down the years we used to do, when I was in uh, Oasis, we used, to have, we used to do some really long sound checks and they'd be so amazing that, we, that we'd, we'd have to stop it sometimes and say, this would be the gig, what are we doing? So, <laughs> but we rehearsed, we, we rehearsed up enough to just, it's more for the sound man, really. We shouldn't really have to sound check now. It's just that everyone knows what they're doing. There's, right. none, of, there's none of this. Can I put the fucking... There, 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 I want more. There's yeah. none of that going on now. So uh, as my band said to me yesterday in the sound check, fucking hell, it sounds really good. And I was like, <laughs> fucking want to for the money I'm paying you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it does sound really good. Yeah, no, it does um, sound good. So, so the last time I saw you was about five and a half years ago, and it was on Who Built the Moon? Um, and I remember asking you a little bit at the time about producers, because you'd used a different producer that mm. time around, Dave, David Holmes. Um, and then for uh, Council Skies, the, the new album, which is fantastic, by the way. Mm, thank you. Um, you sort of bought it back in-house again. Yeah. Um, well, I, to be honest, I've never, re I've never really gone out of my way to, oh, I have to use this producer or that producer. I kind of know what I want to sound like. Obviously not with Who Built the Moon, I had no idea what was going on. That was like a concept between me and David and it's going to be written in the studio. So I had no, I had no input on that, of minimal input on that. But what, what, I, what, what I do, yeah, I am a producer. Do you know what I mean? I'm, and I'm certainly good enough to produce my own music. And by the time I've decided on a track listing, and the demos that I do, my studio is is so great. It's like it's not a demo studio; it's a proper studio. So, by the time I've my demos already sound like the finished thing, right? So there'd be no point in me in getting a producer in who would come in and want to put his own stamp on it because I've already decided what it's going to be like. But uh, for next time, I don't know if I, I might I might have a change of heart. But I just with this one because it was all written in lockdown and we didn't know who was going to be available or anything like that. It was, we just did it ourselves. Yeah, we'll talk talk about that a little bit. Obviously, we all stopped for mm. for a minute. Um, where were you at in the cycle? I guess we would call it. Well, I I'd, I'd just come back. I I've been on the road for 50, uh, four and a bit years on and off with the Chasing Yesterday record which rolls straight into a U2 tour, which then rolls straight into Who Built the Moon and then finished off a U2 thing. So it was a lot of touring. And there was always the plan to take 2020 out right in 2022, uh, 2021, and then record in 22. And so I I'm, actually haven't lost any time in putting a record. It was always the plan to put it out now. But... Um, you had a little more time to work on it, though. Well, yeah. it just meant I started right instead of having a year off, dossing around and fucking <laughs> right. getting fucking drunk all day. And fucking, uh, I was kind of sat at home. So I, I, I wrote, I wrote way more material than I, than I would have. So I've got, I've got another couple of albums in the bag already. So uh, yeah, I, I guess like most artists navigated it through the best because I, I, I had shit to do. I can, I can do my stuff at home, do you know what I mean? I can... Well, you bought your own studio now as well, right? Yeah, well, that, that wasn't... F I started building that in 2018. That didn't finish until... Um, we didn't get in there until January 21. Oh, all right. So, because obviously it came to a grinding halt and then... Sure. There was that bit where it was like a semi-lockdown where there was only certain people allowed in and they all acted all that fucking bullshit. Yeah. Um, Unless you were a politician. So, Unless you were Boris Johnson. <laughs> you go yeah. wherever you want. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, and I don't live anywhere near my studio. My studio's like fucking about oh. two hours drive away. Um, so I did, I wrote all at home with a little, you know, a little mobile phone and did all the demos into that. And then, and then, and then just waited for, so we could all get in the studio. Right. But it was quite a, it's quite an easy process, I think. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether it has any uh, had any effect on the way the album is, but it was certainly more a more considered approach than, you know, doing it, putting it out, and going on tour. There's kind of 
there was enough time to stand back and listen to it. You said that your demos are pretty much the, the finished yeah. thing anyway. Um, when you did go into the studio to, to record them and turn them into the songs that are on the album, you bought some friends in again, right? Johnny Marr came in. Yeah, Johnny, um, I, this is the first record all my band had played on. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Johnny, yeah, I guess Johnny is the most famous person on it. But, um, Apart from you, obviously. Well, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he, yeah he was there, Johnny was there for about a week. Right. Uh, and it's always an amazing kind of time hanging out with him anyway. He's, a, he's, a, he's an old friend of mine, so... We have a great time, but um, yeah, he was great what he did. You know, I love working with him. You've always been big on um, strings and horns, um, and there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of that on, on this record. Yeah. It wasn't intentional. It, as the demos were going on, um, and of course it's just me in the studio and, a, and an engineer, and uh, we would put on fake strings on the keyboard and fake brass and think, oh, it's going to work because we get some. When 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 everywhere was reopened and we got to we got to redo it, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a concept to to go in and do that. But then as the album was taking shape, it was like, hmm, it's like most of it's got strings on, which is it's not a bad thing. It's beautiful. You know, if you can, as long as you can, uh, as long as you can recreate it live, which which we're doing a pretty good job of. So, um, yeah, it's something I haven't done for a while. You yeah. Know? Um, and I've got a string arranger, a girl called Rosie Danvers, who, who works for me in London. Who's she's done all my string arrangements for years, and she just gets it. I don't even really have to tell her what you know. I don't even have to tell her what. You just give her the demo and say, "Fill it in." Well, I, the, no, she'll come to the studio and and kind of sit there, and you know, she just gets it. I get. I've often wondered maybe it's because she's a woman that she gets the more romantic side of it. And it's a, the strings are a lot less. Uh, they're very kind of female sounding strings and romantic. Um, but no, the, if anything, I'd just uh, for example, for Dead in the World, I'd say just think of it as French film noir, you know. And then she'd go off and do that. And then for Open the Door, I had the top line melody. I've had that melody for years, and it was a guitar riff, and then it was a piano riff, and then then it ended up that. But it's great. It's great when you. It's actually one of the. the the best moments of a songwriter's life when you get in the studio and there's a full orchestra there and they fire up and they start bringing your songs to life. It's like, oh wow, fucking hell, you know. So that was um, pleasantly surprising. The opening track is I'm Not Giving Up Tonight. And I mean, that's full on. There's, mm. there's bells, there's, there's oh, whistles. Yeah. It's, it's the whole yeah. thing. Uh, is that at the beginning of the album for a reason? I mean, it sort of seems to set an intention. Yeah. I should have actually had it as the closing track. I think I think there would have been a better. Well, so the, the 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 closing track is a track called "Think of a Number," and actually, the entire track listing was set in stone very very early, apart from these two tracks. And I kept flipping them just to listen to it home, and I kept flipping them. And I, I ludicrously, I actually thought "Think of a Number" wasn't strong enough to open a record, and I thought people would be expecting a big kind of. And actually. In hindsight, I should have had that as the opening track because it, it would have meant the album would end on a more positive note, whereas it ends on a bit of a bleak note. Mm. But that's the one change I would make. Um, but no, it, it's not there for any specific reason other than I felt like for this, you know, my albums always open up with something huge. And I thought for this one, maybe it's something a bit more understated. Um, but it's a fucking great song. It is a great yeah, it's a great song. song. It's yeah, great. The way that the way that it came out sounded is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I love all the strings. Yeah, and, oh, amazing. And, and then the horns kick in, and you're yeah. just like, "What yeah. is going on here?" Yeah, got a, yeah, we haven't had much. Well done, to, Noel. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well done. <laughs> thank you. So, so back in the states, as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, of this we're at the Greek Theatre mm. uh, tonight, and you're out with Garbage and, and Metric as well. That's an awesome show. That's a great. Line. Yeah. How's it been going? You're about a weekend. Uh, we haven't seen much of each other. I've seen, obviously, we've seen each other backstage, sure. and kind of hanging out and all that. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen anybody's shows yet because I've been busy doing this, and then uh, I've got stuff going back on in England, so um, I'm on the phone most of the time. But um, yeah, I mean, they've been great. You know, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't is it good so to be back on the road? Oh God, yeah, I love touring America. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. Yeah. 
the more the older that I get, the more I appreciate it. I mean, there's nothing better than seeing America on a bus for six weeks. So, like, I love it. It's, it's still, it's still, it's, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you still yeah. get it. Because yeah, I've talked yeah. to a, a few Brits over the years who were like, I loved it the first eight times I did it, and then it's like, oh really? Yeah, no, I don't, I've not, I haven't got a. I haven't got jaded with it yet. I mean, maybe it's because I've got my own tour bus and I'm kind of, I've got a big fucking huge travelling hotel, so that kind of helps. It's <laughs> probably uh, got something yeah. to do with it. Uh, but I, it's a little um, bit different from a greyhound. No, I mean, tours are what you make them, do you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, look, I've been on tours in a band where it's been fucking dreadful, you know, where it's just the tension and kind of like the, the conflicting egos in a band is can make things tricky. Yeah. Which is why people eventually start going solo because they're like, I fuck those guys. You know what I mean? I do it my own way now. So the way I do it now, it's very clean and serene. Well, you, it's just you. I mean, you make the rules. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that there are that many rules, but uh, no, I, I like to do things at my own pace and I like, I like the routine of it all. I like the I like the sound checking at the same time and eating the same things in the same day. I never get bored of it. I kind of, um, my character is... The way my character is, I'm in need of routine. If everything's all loose and fucked up, I kind of get makes me anxious. Interesting. You like that with songwriting as well? Do you sort of set, uh, you know, times? No, to... no, so, no. Songwriting, songwriting is a bit more loose, where it's just kind of noodling away at home every day, and something fall out of the sky mm. like a phrase or something. So that's a bit more. Yeah, that, that you're a bit more. Yeah, that's a bit more loose. But no, no, on a, on an every yeah, I crave routine. I don't know why that is. If I don't have... Structure. Yeah, if I don't have a set routine, it's start, I start to freak out a little bit. Right. Um, I, I have always been like that as a, as a child. So, um, yeah, so I enjoy it. Cool. Uh, it's great talking to you, Noel. Oh, thank you very much. No worries. All right. Thank you very much.